on guys, welcome back to Tactical Talks. So in this video, we're gonna be doing a little more discussion. Uh, I kinda asked a question in the last video, which you guys wanted me to talk about, which I wanted to hear as far as on my side of it. And one of the questions that was brought up by Caleb um, was kinda what I recommended as far as like active shooter situations, what you can do to help yourself, um, what I recommended, and then on top of that, how to keep, if you're, putting yourself in a position to try to, I guess, help the situation, um, how to keep from friendly fires not firing upon you when they show up, because of course, at some point, law enforcement is gonna show up. So I know with this being a gun channel, you guys, or most people are probably gonna assume that I'm gonna say, pull your gun out and get in there and start shooting. Now, while I'm not opposed to that, there's a couple things that you have to keep in mind. Um, one of those things for me is, you can't control what somebody else does. So keep that in mind. And what I mean by that is, you go into a situation, these, these active shooter situations and things like that just kind of pop up out of nowhere. And that's where they have the, the tactical advantage is most people never saw it coming, it just happens. Now, most of us are out and about with family, with friends, we're out enjoying our day. I'm gonna highly, highly recommend don't put yourself in a position that's gonna end up getting yourself hurt or killed. Um, there's a lot of people that have training to do things like that, to kinda to intervene and step in, whether you're military, whether you're prior military, law enforcement, whatever your background is, and there's just a lot of people that, that pay for good training to go out and, and learn how to shoot and learn how to, you know, be good in those situations. So. If you're just a, a person who decided I was, I'm was i gonna go out, I'm gonna carry a gun, by no means am I saying that you can't help in that situation, and by no means am I saying you shouldn't help in that situation, but you have to know your boundaries. You have to know what your capabilities are and understand is it a good idea for you to try to intervene and try to help. Because the other thing you gotta keep in mind is you may not be the only one with the gun trying to help. So a bad guy comes out with the gun, you come out with the gun as the good guy trying to help the situation, but another person who's trying to be the good guy doesn't know who's good or who's bad, and now all of a sudden to him, you look like a bad guy. So that's what I mean by you can't help what somebody else is gonna do. The other thing that I want you guys to keep in mind, something that people talk about a lot of times, but it, it kind of just depends on situations, is fight or flight. A lot of people have never been in a situation to where they've been getting shot at, where they're around people getting shot, the, the chaos that comes with a situation like that. Now, when I was in the military, we went overseas and there was guys that had been trained to shoot, you know? The Marine Corps says that everyone is a rifleman before you're anything else. And, you know, these guys had been trained the way I'd been trained. They'd gone through, you know, combat training. They'd done, you know, the boot camp, all these different things they'd done this training. And now we got boots on the ground, we're overseas. And, you know, when everything hit the fan, there was some guys that just froze. And it doesn't make them any less of a person. It doesn't mean that you can't be better or you can't do better. But in that instance, when it happens, and the first time that you're exposed to it, you just don't know how your body's gonna react. So for a lot of people, and I know people are like, oh, I took this handgun class, I took this heck tactical class, I took this, I took that, or whatever. You just don't know how you're gonna react until you've been put in a situation similar to that one. So keep that in mind as well. Just because you have this idea or this plan in your head of, if something was to happen, this is what I'm gonna do, it may not always go that way. So like I said, one, keep that in mind. Two, that, that's something that you have to look at in every aspect of what's going on in the world today and these mass shooters. Now. By no means am I trying to, to cover for anybody or am I trying to like say that people's actions are okay or whatever, but there have been situations where, you know, law enforcement maybe doesn't do what you think they should have done or what the media thinks they should have done or what society thinks they should have done. And that's the whole controversial piece. Well, he didn't do this, he didn't do that, he didn't do this. Most officers, even though we carry a gun every single day at work and we carry all this extra ammo at work, everything, most officers never get into a gunfight. And that's just, that's the reality of the situation. It, it's more of like an insurance policy. We carry that in case something happens, 
you have that deadly force option. But like I said, majority of officers never even get into a gunfight. They'll carry their gun an entire career and only shoot that gun once, twice a year when it's time to qualify. So keep that in mind as well. My recommendation, my full recommendation as far as what should I do in a situation like that is save yourself. And I know that sounds selfish and I know a lot of people may not agree with that, but in law enforcement and military, the thing, the first thing that I've always learned is you can't save anybody else if you don't save yourself. If you're not around, if you're hurt, if you're dead, whatever the case is, if you're not around, if you're not in good enough condition to help yourself, then you definitely can't help somebody else. So that is my number one recommendation. Do whatever you have to do to save yourself first. Now, when the opportunity opens up and you have the chance to save somebody else, do whatever you feel is necessary. But the thing that is key, at least for me and, and my recommendation, my opinion, is save yourself. Whether that's hiding, whether that's running, nobody's gonna think any less of you because you know, you hid somewhere for an hour or two hours, whatever the case is, in order to make sure that you're okay. If you have family, make sure you do whatever you can to save your family. Same thing like when you get on an airplane, they say, put on your mask, put yours on first so that we know you're okay or you know you're okay, and then help everybody else. That's the same exact mindset that you should have in an active shooter type situation, in a traumatic event situation, um, natural disaster situation. It, it, it is all the same in, in my head as far as the steps that you should take in order to preserve your life and everybody else's life around you. Um, unfortunately, in situations like that, there's been some situations where it's been stopped very early, very you know, very quick. Some of them have drug out a lot longer. Majority of the time, somebody is injured and or killed. That That's kind of the nature of the beast, as mean as that sounds. It's going to happen when you have guns involved and people involved and you have a person if not some people who are acting recklessly with that firearm unfortunately somebody's going to get hurt and or killed so like i said it, i'm not trying to downplay that situation by any means it's it's a tragic thing it's something that i think it's crazy that we even have to talk about it but in talking about it keep that in mind that is my 100 percent recommendation as far as any kind of military training i've ever received any kind of law enforcement training i've ever received make sure that you save yourself so that you have the ability to save somebody else. So keep that in mind. Um, that's really kind of what it boils down to. Now I could sit here and say, do this, do that, do this, do this all day long. But again, that fight or flight kicks in. If you've never been in a situation like that, which I hope that, that you never have to be in a situation like that. But if you've never been in a situation similar to that, it's hard to say, this is what you should do. This is what's gonna happen because it's different every time. So the other question I want to answer was from Reynaldo on the last video. He commented saying that he was going to be going to the police academy. So shout out to Reynaldo. Good luck, man. I hope everything works out for you. Um, situations like this, it's, it's mostly mental, man. So keep your head in the game. You're going to do good. But the question that he asked is, what should you do when you encounter an officer who maybe isn't the nicest person or is maybe doing something that you feel is violating your rights? Um, and this is kind of an easy question to answer, but maybe not the easiest situation to deal with. So I'll tell you in my experience as an officer, when I deal with people who are, are being mean, aggressive, trying to cuss me out, yell at me, the more that stuff happens, the nicer I become. And it's just kind of one of those things that I've learned to do that I, it gets on their nerves even more when, when you're doing that. Now I'm not saying to try to get on somebody's nerves, but you as a citizen, there's certain things that, that are kind of expected of you. When you get pulled over, the biggest thing as far as now is like, we want to make sure we can see your hands, your hands on the steering wheel, roll your windows down if you got windows tinted. If you can turn the light on in the car at nighttime, we definitely appreciate that kind of stuff. It just kind of puts everybody at ease in that situation. But like everything else, there are bad apples. So I'm not going to say that you're not going to encounter somebody who is mean or rude or whatever. When and if that does happen, the best thing that I can tell you guys from a law enforcement standpoint is do whatever is asked of you. You're, you're not going to agree with everything 100%. You're not going to like the way you're being spoken to sometimes. And I get that and I understand that. But know that in this day and age, everything is recorded, audio and video. So what you do is they pull you over, they stop you, they talk to you, whatever. 
If they ask you to step out of the car, step out of the car. If they ask you to stop talking, stop talking. If they, you know, whatever they ask you to do, you know, comply with what they're asking you to do. Because at that time, during that traffic stop or during that encounter with the officer is not the time to argue. Um, there's so much stuff going on. You don't know what that officer has been dealing with or what they've been doing, what they're investigating. So do whatever is asked of you in that moment. Once everything is calmed down, everything is over and done, contact that person's department. Let them know, hey, look, I was stopped. This happened, that happened. I don't agree with this. What can I do? And a lot of officers and a lot of departments are really good about walking you through the process as far as if you want to file a grievance. Um, if your rights were violated, then then at that point you can seek, you know, an attorney or, or whatever it takes in order to to make sure to follow up on it to make sure that everything was done correctly. But I can tell you that if you start fighting or arguing or anything on the scene, you're not helping your cause at all. I'm not trying to tell anybody how to get anybody else in trouble, but what I don't want to happen to anyone and especially to my viewers is that you're out on on a scene or you're out somewhere, you're confronted by someone. And then now you start doing something that makes you look like a guilty party in that situation. You don't want to look guilty, whether or not you did anything wrong. You don't want to, you know, have it look a certain way. Comply with everything. So when it comes down to it, whenever video is reviewed, audio is reviewed, you can say, "Look, I did everything the officer asked me to do. These were the things that were done, and explain what you didn't like or what you didn't um, agree with." And at that point, after the fact, it's so much easier to look back and break everything down and say, well, this is why this was done this way. This is why that was done that way. And maybe you'll have a better understanding of, you know, why things were done that way, whether or not you actually agree with it. But I can tell you on the scene is not the time to be doing that stuff. So my full recommendation to you is just comply with what's going on. Um, if they're allowing you to record at the time, depending on the situation, sometimes that does happen. Sometimes it doesn't. If you can record, record it yourself. Everything is being recorded on the officer's end, but the more you have, the better. And like I said, wait till the situation is over and it's no longer a, a heated situation or an active investigation. And then after that, y'all can go back, look at it, and then hopefully everything turns out for the best. I'm gonna be hitting you guys up. There's a few of you that are gonna be receiving things. Um, my Patreon squad, you guys are gonna be getting a Yeti cup with the Wolfhead logo on. So. Be looking out for that. I know I talked to you guys about that already. If you guys are wanting to join the Patreon squad, click the links down below. These guys get free stuff and giveaways as often as I can. Anything from shirts to decals to gun holsters to Yeti cups. Um, we're gonna we got patches coming. We we have hats. I mean, just so many different things that these guys have gotten because they help me out and they support the channel. And that's just my way of saying thank you. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome to the Wolf Pack. Um, we just sit here, have fun, discuss new things, talk about things right now. It's been more discussion based and I think these videos are going really well. I'm recording when I can um, and we have more stuff coming so we'll be doing more reviews and then more giveaways. So thank you guys for watching, checking out this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, comment down below, check all the links down in the description so you guys can see more of what I have going on. My second channel is linked down below with my vlogging channel. I'm going to be vlogging more and then we'll just kind of go from there. So again, thank you guys for watching. I gotta go finish running errands and I'll see you on the next one.